you might be wondering why this video is so long and is it worthwhile watching? Let's put things into perspective. Latest average duration of PWC interview is between 4 to 6 hours. Imagine how many questions could be asked as part of that. There are quite a few questions that are being asked as part of that interview. So what we're trying to do here, we're trying to help somebody prepare and get ready for the interview and assessment test. And our goal for this video was to identify and put together the questions that are frequently used so you will get ready. Hi there, this is Vadim Mikhalenka from Online Training for Everyone. And in this quick video, we're going to focus on the key IQ and aptitude questions you see on PwC, PricewaterCoopers Consulting Test. Most of my career, I worked as an experienced information technology consultant. One of my objectives was to help companies get ready and hire candidates. I put together a lot of interview and assessment test questions myself. And in this video, in addition to questions, I also share with you some helpful tips, tricks and hacks on how to get ready and pass the test. If you don't think that this is something that would be useful to you or applicable to you, just make sure to skip to the next question. In this video, I will share with you sample questions we see on the test. I will have some questions for you to try and I'll show you tips, tricks and hacks on how to get ready and pass the test. I will also share with you some additional test resources that might benefit you and might help you to get ready for the test quickly. Let's look at the sample question. How many squares are in this picture? And you have four choices, 16, 29, 30, or 32. Do you think you know the answer? Let me tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Vadim Mikhalenka, and I have MBA and master's degree in computer science. I have been helping people for more than 25 years to get hired and find jobs. I have founded howtoanalyzedata.net website with only intent to help people get employment. This site helped a lot of people, and I'm pretty sure it will help you as well. In this video tutorial, you will have everything you need to get ready and pass the test. I'll show you sample test questions with answers and explanations. I will have practice questions for you to answer. I'll share with you tips, tricks, hacks and techniques that work now to get you ready for the test. And I'll share with you some additional test resources to get you prepared quickly. And now, let's go ahead and jump right to the questions. Let's look at the question which is frequently used as part of verbal reasoning, logical reasoning, abstract reasoning, and used as part of various aptitude tests. What will come at the place of question mark? And you present it with the series Z2, Y4, X8, W16, and then question mark. And you have four choices, V32, S32, V24, and then S24. Which one do you think is right? To answer this question, you need to try to detect the pattern. And there are two patterns here presented in this question. First pattern is the pattern of the alphabet, in reverse order. So you have letters Z, Y, X, and W. X, Y, Z, W, X, Y, Z, those are the last letters of the English alphabet. So the letter before Y would be the letter that you need to put as the first character in the question mark. That's the first pattern. Then the second pattern is the pattern of numbers increasing. You have numbers increasing in the power of 2. 2, 4, 8, 16. So the next one here would be 32. So the correct answer here is V32. Let's recap. To answer this question, you need to follow two patterns. One pattern for the letters and second pattern for the numbers. The letters decrease by 1 and the numbers double each time. So the correct answer here is V32. Hopefully you've got this one right. Now let's look at the very tricky question, which is frequently used as part of a variety of different tests. What is the ratio between Alice's and Bob's profit for the month of February? And you have a table here, which lists four different months, January, February, March. You have Alice's profits and Bob's profits. And you have four choices for the ratios, two to three, two to five, 3 to 4, and 1 to 3. Which one do you think is right? Let's see how you can get to the right answer here. First, to get to the right answer, you need to identify Alice's and Bob's profit for the months of February, which is represented by amounts of $32 and $48. So the ratio of Alice's profits to Bob's profit is 32 to 48, which is an equivalent of 32 16s to 48 16s, which is an equivalent of 2 to 3. 
So the correct choice here is choice A, 2 to 3. I'm pretty sure you've nailed this question, but in case you need to practice more with similar questions from real tests, make sure to download my ebook with more practice questions using the description of this video link that's available there. If you like the content, please give this video a big thumbs up. This tells us that you need more content like this, and we'll make sure that you get it in the future. Now let's continue and get you ready for the assessment test. Let me give you a tip on how to plan your time during the test. As you're probably well aware, most of the assessment tests are timed. One thing you can do to increase your chances of passing the test is to calculate how much time would you have per question. For example, if you have 50 questions that you need to complete in 60 minutes, you can do a quick math in your head. By dividing 60 by 50, it will give you the answers that you need about 1.2 minutes per question, which is an equivalent of 72 seconds per question. Having this information handy will tell you how much time you need to allocate per each question. Now let's continue and get you ready for the assessment test. Now let's look at the question which tests your knowledge of working with shapes, patterns, and numbers. Select an arrow which logically belongs in the rectangle with the question mark. Here on the screen, you see three by three box. Each row of the box and each column of the box has arrows. One arrow is missing. Which arrow do you think is missing? The key here is to identify the pattern. Each row and each column contains unique arrows. In the first row, we have arrow pointing to the right, upper right, and then to the upper left. Then upper left, right, and upper right. So here we have upper right, and then we have arrow pointing to the upper left, and what's missing is the arrow pointing to the right. And that would be the right answer. And the arrow pointing to the right would be choice A. And this is the explanation. So each row has three arrows, all three arrows are directed to three directions, and they are unique. According to the pattern, correct answer is A, because arrow which is directed to the right is missing in the third row. Hopefully you've got this one right. And now let's look at the question which is frequently used as part of numerical reasoning tests. What is the number that is one half of one quarter of one tenth of 800? And there are four choices, 20, 12, five and 10. How would you answer something like this? Let's go ahead and take a look. To answer this question, you need to do operations in reverse. So one tenth of 800 is 80, and then one quarter of 80 is 20, and one half of 20 is 10. So the correct answer is D, 10. And let's recap. This is the explanation. To get to this answer, you need to go in reverse. One tenth of 800 is 80, one quarter of 80 is 20, and one half of 20 is 10. So the correct answer is D. Hopefully you've got this one right. When we were just starting our mission, we wanted to pick the name that would best describe our values. And this is the main reason why we picked howtoanalyzedata.net, because the core of our mission is covering questions how and why in every video that we make. Make sure you consider this when you're making your own decision whether to subscribe to the channel or not. Because online training for everyone is one of the few channels that provides you with the real answers. So here is the tricky question which is frequently used as part of logical reasoning tests and numerical reasoning tests. The day after the day after tomorrow is four days before Monday. What day is it today? You have four choices, Sunday, Monday, Friday, and Saturday. And the reason I'm laughing is because this tells me that you always should come to those types of tests after a very good night's sleep and try to schedule them in the morning. That's the best advice I can give you. Because sometimes if you come to this type of test tired, you wouldn't even understand what they're asking you to do. So do you have an idea how to answer this? Let's take a look at the answer. Again, most of the time you have to use reverse method to get to the right answer. And the reverse method tells us that four days before Monday is Thursday, and day before day before Thursday is Tuesday. If tomorrow is Tuesday, today is Monday. So the correct answer is B, Monday. Hopefully you've got this one right. Let me give you a couple reasons why you might consider subscribing to online training for everyone. State-of-the-art skills 
tips, tricks and techniques we share with you here on online training for everyone will help you today and in the future. We use scientifically proven methodology to create videos that will help you learn faster and retain more materials. When you click the subscribe button now, you will become connected and will be the first one to receive automatic notifications when new video is released. Let's look at the question which is very frequently used as part of various aptitude tests. You could see it as part of math reasoning, abstract reasoning, numerical reasoning, and a lot of other tests. If the family spends a total of $60,000 in 2020, approximately how much of this was spent on food? You have a pie chart that you can see with the percentages of spending, and you have different spending categories. And there are four choices as usual, $7,800, $9,000, $10,200, or $12,600. Which one do you think is the right choice? To answer this question, you have to analyze the pie chart. And pie chart represents food as the gray color. And gray color has a 13% of the entire circle, which means that 30% out of $60,000 was spent on food in 2020. To calculate the actual amount, you need to multiply 0.13 by $60,000. And the answer is $7,800 was spent on food in 2020. Let's recap. The pie chart gives you the percentage of family's budget that was spent in six different categories. Notice that food takes 13% of the budget. Therefore, if you multiply 0 0.13 by 60,000, you will get $7,800. And that is choice A. Hopefully you've got this one right. Please make sure to check out available downloads in the description section of this video. Now let's look at the very complex question which you see a lot during logical reasoning tests, psychometric tests, and the numerical reasoning tests. Find the correct shape to continue the series. And what we have here, we have 3x3 three three matrix with uh, 8 shapes populated and one shape is missing. There are four choices as usual, but in order for you to calculate the right shape, you need to determine the pattern. And in fact, there are two patterns here on this screen. Can you figure it out? Do you know what the right answer is? As I mentioned, there are two patterns here. One is there is a pattern for the shape. Which shape would you choose? And second pattern is the pattern for the lines. And where is the right location for the line itself? Now let's go through the detection of the shape pattern first. So the shape pattern is triangle, square, and then the circle. Right, so triangle, square, and the next one would be the circle. So we have a circle that's uh, the right value here, but all of this are the circles. So this was helpful, but not by much. But it just tells us that we are detecting the first pattern. And here, if you want to confirm, we have square, circle, and then triangle. Now, the most important part here is to determine on which side of the shape the lines should be located. And what we have here, we have four locations, as you can see in the answer. One location on the top, right, left, and bottom. So how would you know where's the right location for the circle shape? So let's look closely here and let's detect the pattern here for the line location. The line location starts with the bottom, right, and then top. So you see it's going counterclockwise. So if, if you imagine the clock with the clockwise uh, rotation, then this would be counterclockwise. And let's see if we are correct and we have a pattern here. So we have bottom, right, top, then we have left, bottom, so that still matches the counterclockwise pattern. And then we have left, bottom, right. So I think the missing shape here would be the one before the left, which would be on the top. So the right answer in this case would be A, because here we have a circle which matches the circle's pattern, and then we have lines located at the top. Let's verify to confirm that. And as you can see, the correct answer is A. So let's recap. There are two patterns you need to detect in this assignment. Patterns for the shapes and pattern for the line location. Shapes are displayed in the particular order. Triangle, square, circle, that's really the pattern for the shapes. And pattern for lines are in a counterclockwise order. So correct answer is A. Hopefully you've got this one right. You will see a lot of these types of questions in the assessment test. Let's look at the question which you might get when applying for banking positions, insurance companies' positions, or any other position within financial industry. 
What is the profit in US dollars at the end of week 4 if a buyer buys 100 pounds in week 1 and converts back to US dollars in week 4? You have four different choices presented, A, B, C, and D. And then you have a table, conversion rate between pounds and dollars for four weeks. In week 1, the conversion rate is 129, and in week 4, the conversion rate is 1.3132. Which one do you think is the right answer here? To get to the right answer, you need to calculate the values, the total sum of US dollars in week 1, and then you need to convert it back to US dollars in week 4. Ultimately, week 2 and week 3 values are irrelevant here, because you're holding through weeks 2 and week 3. And this is how you do the calculation. In week 1, you need 129 US dollars to buy 100 pounds. And value of 100 pounds in week 4 is 131.32 dollars. So the profit will be calculated as the difference between 131.32 and 129.8, and would be equivalent of $1.52. So the correct answer is C here. I hope you've got this one right, but in case you need to practice more, make sure to download my ebook with more practice questions using the link in the description of this video. Can I ask you to do me a favor? If you recently passed employment assessment test, please share the questions that are being asked during the test. This will help all of us learn and better prepare for the upcoming test. Now let's continue and get you ready for the assessment test. Now let's look at the reasoning question where you need to complete the sentence. Read below sentence and give the correct answer. Book is to reading as fork is two, and then you need to pick one of the four choices. Painting, writing, eating, and lifting. So what do you think is the right choice? I think it's pretty obvious here, so. But let's look at the right answer. So the correct answer is obviously eating, right? Because book is to reading. This is an activity associated with reading. As fork is to eating, you use fork during the meal consumption. So the correct choice is C. And that's because forks are used during dining and meal consumption. Hopefully you've got this one right. Now let's look at the question where you tested not just how well you know English, but also how well can you operate with the letters and take guesses based on the questions asked. A lot of times these types of questions used in the verbal reasoning tests and in a lot of other tests as well. For example, psychometric tests or logic reasoning tests, these types of questions we see all the time. So the question, which of the following can be arranged to a five-letter English word? And there are four choices with five letters of the words, and you kind of would need to look at each choice, and you would need to take a guess which one would be the one which leads to a specific English word. And obviously nobody gives you the English word, so you would have to take a guess on the word and combine these letters. So they will be represented by the specific English word. So which one do you think is the right choice? Couple suggestions here. You see choice A uh, has inside of this letters uh, English word goat. So typically it's the wrong choice because typically you wouldn't be able easily rearrange this word into something else. Typically, and again, it's only typically, but you would want to start with the letter somewhere in the middle. And the right choice here is choice B, and it's uh, the word shape. That's really the word that the end result of it. You don't have a way of knowing, right, because you don't know what the end word is. So you would have to look realistically at all the different choices and see if you can combine them. But I would start with the middle letter. Because typically they try to trick you, and first letter is typically not the one that starts this new word. So find more exercises like this. This one was tricky. This one was difficult. Uh, very few people uh, guess it right. But it takes practice to get these types of questions correctly. So make sure Google uh, or find on the internet these types of uh, verbal reasoning questions and see if you can get better at this. In addition to showing you questions and answers from the real test, I also have questions for you to answer. Most of the videos on this channel have practice questions for you to answer. Please make sure to post your answers in the comment section of the video. This will allow me to validate your answer and give you the grade. Now let's continue and get you ready for the assessment test. Let's look at the question which tests your knowledge of logical reasoning and how well you can apply this knowledge 
to charts and graphs. Review the graph in the picture and answer the question, during which period did the revenue of the company declines? There is a picture represented here with two lines, one blue line that shows revenue and then the orange line which shows the cost. The period is from 2013 to 2020, and you have four choices to select from. 2014 to 2015, 2019 to 2020, 2013 to 2014, and 2016 to 2017. Which one do you think is right? To answer this question correctly, you need to differentiate between revenue and the cost. Because revenue is represented by blue line, you have to follow the blue line to answer the question in which period revenue declines. If you follow the line, you see that for all the years, with the exception of period of 2014 to 2015, right here, the line goes up. And only for the period 2014 to 2015, revenue declines. So that is the correct choice and that is the correct answer. Now let's recap. The line graph shows the revenue and costs of a small company between the periods of 2014 and 2020. To estimate the changes, you need to find the spot on the line which goes down. Only place when line goes down is between the years of 2014 and 2015. Therefore, choice A, which shows 2014 to 2015, is the right answer for this question. Hopefully you've got this one right. And now, let's look at the question which confused tons of people during the test. How many squares are in this picture? And you have choices of 16, 29, 30, and 32. Which one do you think is right? The confusion part of this question comes with the fact that squares are not only the small squares that's shown in the picture. So if you do only small squares, that the answer would be 16. But you can have this area as a square, you can have this area as a square, and large area is also a square. So once you calculate all of those, you will get to the correct answer. And the correct answer is 30 because there are 16 small squares, nine squares which would be created using four small squares, four squares which can be created using nine small squares, and one big square. So that when we come out with the answer 30. So you kind of have to know how to calculate it a little bit, but this question we see a lot as part of numerical reasoning tests and psychometric tests. So I just want to make sure that you guys are prepared. Let me share with you some information that you probably don't know. Based on our recent research, most assessment test providers deduct points for incorrect answers, so it is not a good idea to guess answers during the test. You can ask the provider to see how they handle incorrect answers. If they deduct points for incorrect answers, you might consider skipping the questions where you do not know the answers to. Now let's continue and get you ready for the assessment test. Now let's look at the tricky question, which is frequently used as part of math reasoning and abstract reasoning tests. There are 28 women and 21 men attending online webinar. What is the ratio of women to the total number of people? And there are four choices, 4 to 7, 4 to 3, 5 to 7, and 28 to 21. Which one do you think is the right answer? The tricky part about this question is that there are choices B and D, which represent the ratio of women to men. But this is not what needs to be calculated here, because ratio of women to total number of people need to be captured. Let's look at the correct answer. Total ratio of women to men is 4 to 3, but the ratio of women to total number of people is 4 to 7, which represented by 28 to 49. And 49 is calculated as the sum of all people, 28 women and 21 men. So the correct answer is A, 4 to 7. I'm pretty sure you nailed this question. Can I ask you to do me a favor? If you know someone who will benefit from this material and looking for the job, please share this content with them. I really appreciate it. This will help them find the jobs quickly. Thank you very much. Now let's continue and get you ready for the assessment test. Now let's look at the question which tests your knowledge of charts and graphs, math reasoning, and logical reasoning. Approximately, what percentage of jewelry sales in October were bracelets? And you presented with the graph, which has four sections. Each section has two bars. Each bar represents monthly sales. Blue bar represents April sales for different types of jewelry. And orange bar represents October sales for the same jewelry. 
For example, for bracelets, April sales are approximately 125 items versus October sales are approximately 80 items. You have four choices to answer this question. Around 11%, choice B around 18%, around 25%, or around 40%. So how would you approach this question? Which one do you think is the right answer? To answer this question, you need to add up all jewelry sales for October and then understand what percentage of those were bracelets. For example, for earrings, the value is about 125. Same thing for necklaces. For rings, it's about 110. And for bracelets, it's about 80. Let's add up all these values in the calculator. The total number for October sales of jewelry is 440 items. Now we need to divide 80, which are the bracelet sales, by 440 and multiply by 100. The answer is about 18, which means that sales of bracelets are about 18% for October. Let's recap. Based on the bar graph, sales of bracelets are represented by the red bar. We do not have precise figures for the sales, so we need to approximate the numbers. Based on the graph, the approximate number of items sold in October are about 125 earrings, about 125 necklaces, and about 110 rings, plus about 80 bracelets. Total of 440 items. To calculate the percentage of bracelets sold, we need to divide 80 by 440 and multiply by 100. The number of bracelets sold in October represented by about 18%. Hopefully you've got this one correctly as this question involved a lot of calculations. A lot of students ask me, how can I learn quickly? Let's look at all different options based on recent scientific research. One of the most effective ways to learn we recommend to our students is a mixed mode learning. You use variety of different resources during mixed mode learning and alternate between them to ensure better comprehension of the material. For example, if you're trying to get ready for Excel assessment test, you can start by watching YouTube videos, then practice the steps in Microsoft Excel, read related topics in the ebook, and then experiment with a variety of questions during practice tests. Now let's look at the question, find the missing value using the pattern. You see the 3x3 three three box and one of the values in this box is missing. So what is the pattern? And there are four choices. We have A, B, C, and D, right? And obviously you would have to find the pattern and calculate the value. So what do you guys think is the right answer here? Before I reveal the right answer, let me try to discuss with you the pattern. So you see 1, 2, and 3, right? But then this one, two, four, and six. So it's not sequential. So it's not like you go one plus one equals two plus one equals three. There is a different type of pattern here. And the right pattern here is that one plus two equals three, right? And then two plus four equals six. And once you know the pattern, you can easily calculate that uh, three plus six equals nine. So the right answer here is choice C. Let's validate. And uh, you're absolutely right. The right choice is choice C, and this is exactly the logic that uh, I just presented to you. Hopefully you've got this one right. People contact me and ask, what's changed during COVID-19? Let's look at the changes in employment assessment test process that have happened recently. One of the biggest changes is the fact that a lot of people work remotely, which means a lot of hiring also happening remotely. Provider might ask you to install special software to monitor your desktop activities. They might also ask you to enable your camera to see what you're doing during the test. Another big shift we see is that the questions become more relevant to the position. For example, if you're applying for accountant or bookkeeper job, make sure you know how to import the data, do profit and loss reports, calculate the expenses, and calculate the annual statements. These are the types of questions that you might see for that specific position. Researching the company and researching the test provider always works for our students. Once you know who the provider is, you can try to go to their website to see the sample questions to get an idea what kind of questions you're going to get on the test. It is always a good idea to refresh your hands-on skills and practice before the test. This gives you necessary boost of confidence and allows to pass the test with the higher grade. 
If you didn't pass the test, make sure to reflect after it. Take notes and develop an action plan to see what the next steps might be to get you the job. Now let's look at another pattern type question. Which number should come next in the pattern? And then you have pattern of numbers 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13. So let's first determine what's the pattern here. Obviously there are four choices, but the result here is calculated based on uh, the pattern that we would need to determine. Which one do you guys think is the right one here? Well, let's look. So we have 1, 1, and then 1 plus 1 equals 2, then 1 plus 2 equals 3, then we have 2 plus 3 equals 5, and then you can kind of keep going. So to calculate the next number, it's basically the sum of the previous two numbers. So 8 plus 13 is 21. So the right choice here is choice B, which is 21. And this is the explanation that the pattern here is really the sum of previous two numbers. Hopefully you've got this one right. There are different types of assessment tests that you might see as part of the hiring process. Let's take a look at the most common options that you might encounter. Most common tests that you see as part of the hiring process are aptitude test, psychometric test, numerical reasoning test, logical reasoning test, math reasoning test, charts and graphs reasoning test, abstract reasoning test, and a lot of others. Sometimes companies also would like to test your technical knowledge based on the job that you're applying for. You might encounter Microsoft Excel test, Microsoft Word test, Outlook, PowerPoint, and a lot of other different tests that might be required for you to succeed on your job. Here's another tricky question which can confuse you easily during the test. Bob is six years old and his sister is a half of his age. When Bob is 30, what would be the age of his sister? And there are four choices, 20, 15, 25, and 27. Which one do you think is right? And obviously, as you might have figured out, the correct answer is D, 27. Bob's sister is three when Bob is six, and Bob becomes 30 after 24 years. And that's why his sister must be 27 years old. Another way to look at it, there is a three year difference. When Bob is 30, his sister would be 30 minus 3, which would be 27. Hopefully you've got this one right. And now it's your turn. Please make sure to post your answer in the comment section below this video so I can give you the grade. Here's the question for you to answer. Below chart shows the number of companies that provide services to different sectors of the economy. What is the percentage of the companies that provide their services to both agriculture and chemical sectors? And you have four choices here. 40%, 22%, 30%, and 25%. Please make sure to post your answer in the comment section below this video so I can give you the grade. Here is the question which tests your knowledge of working with negative numbers. Calculate minus 100 plus 45. Here keep in mind that minus 100 is very tricky. Some people just don't see this minus sign right before the 100. And there are four choices. Minus 145, 145, minus 55, and then 55. So what do you think is the right answer? And obviously the correct answer is C, which is minus 55. And the way we calculate this equation is we can move minus 100 after 45. So the new equation might look like this, 45 minus 100, which would be exactly minus 55. Hopefully you've got this one correctly as well. Please make sure to check out available downloads in the description section of this video. All links to the downloads are available in the description of this video. Please make sure to consider ebooks and practice files, and also consider premium resources that help other people to get prepared faster. Now let's continue and get you ready for the assessment test. Now let's review assessment test question, which tests your knowledge of charts and graphs. Which of the following options represent the largest price increase in a single month. You're presented with the graph which contains three different lines, one for tulips, another one for orchids, and the third one is for roses. You have four choices, tulips from January to February, choice B, tulip from March to April, choice C, orchid from April to May, and choice D, roses from February to March. Which one do you think is the correct answer? To answer this question correctly, you need to look at the segments of this graph. 
segment that goes from months to months represents either price increase or price decrease. The largest segment that represents one single month's largest price increase would be on the blue line from April to May. Blue line represents orchids. And let's go to the choice. So the right answer here is choice C, orchids from April to May. Based on the graph shown, there are different price increases here. Price of the tulip, for example, increased by about $5 from January to February, and another $5 from March to April. But orchids price, which represented by blue line, increased from April to May by nearly $10, which represents the largest price increase. I'm pretty sure you nailed this question. This was rather easy, but you see a lot of these types of questions on assessment test. And now it's your turn. Please make sure to post your answer in the comment section below this video so I can give you the grade. Here is the question for you to answer. You need to find the last number using the pattern. 2, 6, 12, 20, 30, 42 and then the missing number. And the choices are 60, 64, 52 or 56. Which one do you think is the right answer here? Please make sure to post your answer in the comment section below this video so I can give you the grade. And now let's look at the answer to the question, which is very frequently used as part of aptitude tests, math reasoning, abstract reasoning, and logical reasoning tests. The exchange rate for converting US dollars to Chinese yuan is 6.27. How much is 1,000 Chinese yuan are worth in US dollars? And you have four choices 6,270, 627, 1,594, or $159.40. Which one do you think is the correct choice here? Let's see if you can nail this question. To get to the answer to this question, you need to reverse the exchange rate. Exchange rate of converting Chinese yuan to US dollars is 1 divided by 6.27, which is an equivalent of 0 0.1594, which means that the value of 1,000 of Chinese yuan in US dollars is equivalent of 0 0.1594 multiplied by 1,000, which is $159.40. So the correct choice is D. Hopefully your selection for this answer was correct. Let me give you a couple reasons why you might consider subscribing to online training for everyone. Knowing latest assessment test questions and answers helps you to get ready for the interview and assessment test and improves your job mobility. We share with you latest questions asked during the interview you get access to the daily challenge question. You see questions and answers people posting in the comment section of this video, and you get access to other people's experiences. You also have opportunity to help other people by answering their questions. We have a community of great people already subscribed to this channel, and these people are here ready to help you with the challenges you are experiencing. Subscribing to online training for everyone is an exciting opportunity to get ahead in your career. Thank you for your time and consideration and looking forward to have you as a member on this channel. Now let's continue and get you ready for the assessment test. Let's look at the question which is frequently used when you're applying for the jobs with financial companies. Insurance company offers money if the vehicle is stolen, but the percentage of reimbursement is different based on the table. How much will customer get for the vehicle with fair market value of $2,000 in year one, but was stolen in the third year after insuring. You have a table, and it shows that percentage deduction in first year, there is no deduction. After one year, there is a 10% deduction. After two years, 25. And after three years, 40%. And you have four choices, $500, $1,000, $1,500, and $2,000. Which one do you think is right choice here? Let's look at how you would approach answering this question. After two years, you would have to deduct 25% of the original cost of the vehicle. 25% of $2,000 is $500. So $2,000 minus $500 that you would have to deduct would be $1,500 reimbursement that you can get from insurance company. Let's recap. Vehicle is stolen in the third year after two years. Insurance company will deduct 25% of initial value. And 25% of initial value is $500. Company will deduct $500 and offer you $1,500. So the correct choice is answer C. Hopefully you've got this one right. But in case you need to practice more with similar questions, make sure to download my ebook with more practice questions 
using link in the description of this video. One of the best ways to learn is try to test your knowledge periodically. I encourage you to participate in our daily question challenge. Every day we post a new question in the community section of the channel. You have an opportunity to test your knowledge and validate your skills on the different topics. This is one additional reason to subscribe to the channel, because this way all the questions will be delivered to you automatically. Now let's look at the question which is very frequently used as part of aptitude tests when you're applying for the position in financial industry, especially in the banking and insurance industries. If one euro is worth 1.18 US dollars, what is the exchange rate of converting US dollars to euros? You have four choices here. 0 0.83, 0 0.79, 0 0.78, and 0 0.84. How would you calculate this? Let's see if you can nail this question. To get to the correct answer, we need to reverse the exchange rate. If exchange rate for converting euros to dollars is 1.18, then exchange rate of converting dollars to euros must be 1 divided by 1.18, which is an equivalent of 0 0.847. So the correct answer here is D. I would imagine that you've answered this question correctly, but in case you need to practice more with similar questions, Make sure to download my ebook with more practice questions using the link in the description of this video. A lot of people ask me, how can I help? One of the best ways to help others on this channel is to help answer their questions. If you see questions on this channel that you know the answer to, please make sure to post your answer. This way, you will help another person to get hired. Now let's continue and get you ready for the assessment test. Let's look at another tricky question. Which one of the four are the least like the other three? And then we need to choose the correct answer. Tiger, cow, rabbit, or deer? Which one do you think is right? The tricky part of this question is that all of these animals are mammals. But there are three animals, cow, rabbit, and deer, that eat grass. And tiger is a predator. So the correct answer is A, which is tiger. So hopefully you've got this one right. It's a tricky one and it uh, tests your knowledge of exclusion, meaning that you need to read the test question correctly and then you need to find out the correct choice. Hopefully you've got this one right. A lot of students ask me, what are the smartest ways to learn? Let's look at the different options available to you. Let me share with you some ways to learn new material that work for me. I typically use dedicated, uninterrupted chunks of time to read and practice new material. When my attention drifts, I try to take a break and I typically do it every 25 to 30 minutes. I recommend that you download workbooks to practice the hands-on steps, which helps you reinforce the steps and better learn the material. When I try to learn something, I try to watch videos from start to finish in one sitting. I use different playback speed to make sure the material keeps me engaged. I also try to give myself time to absorb the content. And if something is not clear, I try to pause the video and sometimes I even go back to review material more than once. Let's look at the question you might get as part of the interviewing with financial organizations. If exchange rate for US dollars is an equivalent of 0 0.62 euros, how many euros can you buy for $200? And there are four choices, 188 euros, 88 euros, 124 euros, and 176 euros. Which one do you think is right? A lot of times when answering this question, you may not have access to the calculator. So you may need to do the math in your head. To do the math in your head, the easiest way is to do it for $100. For $100, you'll be able to buy 62 euros. Then for $200, you'll be able to purchase double of that, which is 62 multiplied by 2, which equals 224. Let's recap. To answer this question, you need to multiply 200 by 0 0.62 which is an equivalent of 124. So choice D is the right answer. I'm pretty sure you nailed this question. And now it's your turn. Please make sure to post your answer in the comment section below this video so I can give you the grade. Here's the question for you to answer. Find the missing value using the pattern. And you have pattern of numbers, one, two, two, four, eight, a value that's missing, and then 256. You need to choose one from the list. And the choices are 20, 32, 64, and 144. 
What do you think is the right answer here? Please make sure to post your answer in the comment section below this video so I can give you the grade. Now let's look at the very tricky question, which is frequently used as part of a variety of different tests. Find the next value using the pattern, and you present it with the patterns of values 36, 49, 64, 81, and you need to find the next number. You have four choices 121, 100, 96, and 144. What do you think is the right choice here? Let's see if we can nail the answer. If you look closely, you see that there is a square pattern here. 6 by 6 is 36, 7 by 7 is 49. 8 by 8, 64. 9 by 9 is uh, 81. Can you guess the next one? 10 by 10 is an equivalent of 100. Let's recap. So this is the square number series. 64 is the square of 8. 81 is the square of 9. And therefore, next number would be the square of 10. And square of 10 is 100. So the correct choice is B, 100. Hopefully, your selection for the answer was correct. But in case you need to practice more with similar questions from the real tests, Make sure to download my ebook with more practice questions using the link in the description of this video. I would like to give you a tip. There are a lot of different providers that conduct employment assessment tests. Most common providers that do assessment tests today are Indeed.com, IKM, SkillCheck, eSkills, Connexa, SHL, and a lot of others. Employer typically requests provider to administer assessment tests, and then provider contacts the candidates to conduct the test. A lot of times, provider has a sample test questions on their website. Once you know which provider will be assessing your skills, it's a good idea to visit their website to find sample questions. Let's look at the assessment test question, which is frequently used as part of abstract reasoning, numerical reasoning, and logical reasoning tests. Emily buys a car for $9,000 and sells it for $12,000. Calculate approximate profit Emily has made in this transaction. 54% is the choice A, 40% choice B, choice C is 30%, and choice D is 44%. Which one do you think is the right answer here? First, to answer the question here, you need to calculate the actual profit. And the profit is $12,000 minus $9,000, which is equal to $3,000. Then you need to calculate the profit percentage, which is calculated by $3,000 divided by $9,000, because $9,000 is the original price. And the value here that you will get would be 30%. So choice C is correct. Let's recap. Original price for the vehicle was $9,000. Sale price was $12,000. Profit is $3,000 and is calculated as $12,000 minus $9,000. The profit is calculated as 3,000 divided by 9,000 and multiplied by 100 and is equivalent of 30%. So choice C is correct. Did you get this one right? Please share in the description of this video if you got this one correctly. Let me share you smart ways to get prepared for the test. One of the smartest way to prepare is to find out who your provider is that will be conducting an assessment test and use outlines and sample questions from the provider. The providers might be Indeed.com, SkillCheck, IKM, Kinexa, SHL, and a lot of others. Once you know who the provider is, you can go to their website, find out sample questions, and practice with sample questions. You can also practice LinkedIn assessment test questions on the topic that you will be assessed. LinkedIn test is free, it gives you exposure to the sample questions, and also you can get a badge that will enhance your profile for potential employers. You can also research the topic you're trying to prepare for online and download ebooks to get ready for the test. Hands on experience is very important. You can find relevant training and follow along to do hands on exercises using practice videos on the training. If you have a question or ran into an obstacle during your practice exercises, try posting questions in the comment sections of the video. Channel owners or members of the channel monitor the questions and respond to the inquiries. And last but not least, consider subscribing to relevant YouTube channels. I encourage you to consider subscribing to Online Training for Everyone. We have a great community of people helping each other to prepare and pass the test. Let's look at the question, which is frequently used to test your knowledge of charts and graphs. 
and frequently used as part of math reasoning, logical reasoning, and also numerical reasoning tests. How much is spent on transportation if the total budget is $70,000? You have four choices as usual, $10,000, $11,200, $11,500, and $13,500. You also present it with the graph on which transportation is 16% of the entire budget. Which one do you think is the right choice here? To calculate the transportation budget, you need to get 16% of $70,000. Ultimately, you need to multiply 70,000 by 0 0.16. So let's look at the answer. Because percentage of transportation is 16%, the correct answer is $11,200, which is calculated as 16 divided by 100, which gets you 0 0.16 multiplied by $70,000. So the correct choice is $11,200, which is choice B. Hopefully you've got this one right. Let's talk about best practices on how to get ready for employment assessment test. If this option is available and you have a choice, try to schedule assessment test in the morning when you have highest levels of energy. Get a good night's sleep before the test. And please do not take the test if you're tired since a lot of questions require your top mental energy performance. During the test, read each question carefully, ideally more than once. Questions are designed to be tricky, and each and every detail in the question might be important. If you have a choice, try to answer easy questions first. This would allow you to leave harder questions for the end, but you will get easy answers in and you will get the points for them. Try to validate your answers with more than one method. For example, if you do an Excel assessment test, you can do manual calculation, you can try to use formulas for calculations, use calculator, or use pivot tables to validate your answers. And last but not least, try not to guess the answers, as some providers deduct points for incorrect selections. So here is the question, which is frequently used as part of numerical reasoning and logical reasoning tests. Find the next number of the below sequence. And you have series of numbers, 30, 29, 27, 24, 20, 15, and you have a choices, four different choices, 10, 9, 11, and 8. Which one do you think is right? And how would you even approach answering something like this? The key to answer something like this, uh, in this types of questions in general, is to detect the pattern. So you see the pattern here is you increase the number every time you go from one number to the next. 30 is one more than 29, and 27 is two more than 29, 24 is three more than 27, 20 is four more than uh, 24, and 15 is five more than 20. So the next difference would be six, and 15 minus six would be nine. Let's recap. So next number in the sequence is less than the current number. 29 is less than 30, 27 is 2 less than 29, and 24 is 3 less than 27. And you can continue the sequence once you detect it. And final number must be 6 less than 15, which is 9. So the correct answer is B, which is 9. Hopefully you've got this one right. So let's look at another tricky question. What number is the best match? And we have 8 to 4 would be 10 to question mark. So what do you think is the right one here? Let's look at the answer. The best answer here is 4 is the half of 8. So the question mark would be half of 10. And in that case, half of 10 is 5. So that's the number you should choose. Now, the tricky part of this question, some people may mistakenly select 20, which would be double of 10. So make sure you recognize this and don't make this mistake. Hopefully you've got this one right. Let's look at the question which tests your knowledge of charts and graphs, logical reasoning, and math reasoning. During which period did the revenue for the company decline? And you have four periods, 2010 to 2012, 2011 to 2012, 2013 to 2014, and 2016 to 2018. And then you have a chart which represents revenues and costs. Which one do you think is the right answer here? Let's start by looking at the chart. Chart has two lines. One line is dark blue and another line is light blue. Dark blue line represents revenue and light blue line represents the cost. For the revenue, it almost always goes up with the exception of the period between 2013 
to 2014, which is represented right here on the graph. Let's recap. Company's profit is represented on the graph. During 2013 and 2014 period, their revenue was decreasing and the costs were going up. So the correct choice here is answer C, which represents the period of 2013 to 2014. Hopefully your selection for this answer was correct. But in case you need to practice more with similar questions, make sure to download my ebook with more practice questions like this using the link in the description of this video. Now let's look at the question which tests your knowledge of percentages and logical reasoning and frequently used as part of math reasoning, abstract reasoning, numerical reasoning and logical reasoning tests. If total budget for the state of Indiana is $31.4 billion, how much is planned to be spent on agriculture? And you have four choices, 12.24 billion, 7.3 billion, 6.32 billion and 9.42 billion. And you have a chart which shows different percentages for different types of expenditures. Which one do you think is the right choice here? To get to the answer for this question, you need to understand what is the percentage of spent for agriculture. And based on the graph, the plan spent for agriculture is 30%. To calculate the budget for agriculture in actual US dollars, you need to multiply 31.4 by 0 0.3, which represents 30%. Whatever is correct answer based on this calculation would be the choice that you should select for this type of questions. Let's look and recap this question. Agriculture expenditures is 30% of the budget. To calculate total value for agriculture expenditures, you need to multiply 31.4 by 0 0.3, which is equivalent of $9.42 billion. So the correct choice here is answer D, which is $9.42 billion. I'm pretty sure you nailed this question, but in case you need more questions like this to practice, make sure to download my ebook with practice questions using the link in the description of this video. Thanks for watching. I encourage you to check out our daily question challenge in the community section of this channel. I also recommend that you check downloads in the description section of this video. Please also check out resources page on our website, howtoanalyzedata.net slash resources. If you like the content, please give this video a big thumbs up. This tells us that you need more content like this. I would encourage you to share this video with other people that might be looking for the job. This will help them to get prepared and pass assessment test faster. Please consider subscribing and following this channel. We have community of great people helping each other to get ready and pass the test. Please leave questions, comments or suggestions in the comment section of this video. And all the best on your interview and assessment test. Thanks for watching.